I've always been a strict Bujo girl, but when we moved overseas last year, I couldn't take my physical journals with me, so I turned to digital planning as a solution. A digital planner is essentially a PDF with hyperlinks that can be used in note-taking apps like Goodnotes, which is the one I'm using here. Today, I have the pleasure of taking you through the planner I created for 2022. I wanted something that implemented my values of focusing on goals while prioritizing life balance and self-care. I used the theme retro warmth while designing it, so you'll see a lot of warm neutrals and nostalgic fonts. Being a communication designer by profession, I've learned that good design is not what you notice, but it's the way it makes you feel. If a planner has too much going on, you'll feel lost, distracted, and lose focus, which is the exact opposite of what we want to achieve. A good planner should make you feel calm and should invite you to collaborate with it. I brought my love of bullet journaling into this planner, so you'll find a lot of space to think and organize the way you want to, alongside the regular calendar and trackers. This allows you to customize the planner to adapt to your needs within each season of life. Let's begin. There are four planner covers to choose from. Whichever is first in the file will appear as the cover. I plan to change my cover at each quarter to get the feeling of a refreshed planner and mark the passage of time in the year. The homepage has all the hyperlinks you need to access every page of the planner. Every page has a home icon so you can easily come to the index page to navigate where you'd like to go. You can also navigate through the thumbnail icon or through the titled outline section. Before you get into the actual planner, there are a lot of overview pages for intentions, goal setting, self-care, and trackers for progress, procrastination, and finances. Then there are pages for quarterly planning, and at the end, there are customizable pages for meal ideas, a bookshelf, sticker book, and dated planning layout templates, and five blank pages for notes. The planner begins with the intentions page. I'm using these magazine cutout letter stickers that are available for download in the bio. This page has a few guided questions to get you to reflect deeply. I'm not going to lie, they're a little bit difficult, but that's why they're important to push through. Once your intentions are set, you'll have a map to come back to for all the things you do and decisions you make throughout the year. Your word for the year is like a little compass to remind you of what you need most this year. It could be something that you really feel is missing, or something that you would benefit from having in your life. At the beginning of the year, you can state your hopes and expectations, and at the end of the year, you can compare them to the reality and lessons you faced. After 2020, I realized that your plans can go terribly awry, but you can still learn something from the year that you had. It's a reminder to be flexible about what you may want, but what you actually need. The next spread is your year in pictures. Keeping all your favorite moments together will remind you of what you have to appreciate about 2022, and is a great memory page to look back on years down the line. The planning and vision board is your space to go wild. You can literally turn this page into anything you need it to be. And if you need more space, you can just duplicate it. I've designed this page to be a mix of a vision board and a brief list of goals. For more in-depth goal setting, there's the brainstorm and action plan. Personally, I get hyper-focused in certain areas like career and ambition, and I let things like health slide. So I need something that encourages me to have balance in life. There are a few ways to look at your yearly and quarterly overview. There's the entire year at a glance, useful for marking public holidays, special events and trips. The weekends are highlighted in a darker color, so you can roughly see each week without the visual clutter. Next is the quarterly planning page. You can use this page to create a guideline for which projects you'd like to focus on each month or every three months. Then there's the quarterly overview, useful for keeping track of more specific dates and events. And finally, there's the quarterly weekly breakdown at the beginning of each quarter. This is also linked to whichever month you're in from the pie chart icon. This spread breaks down each week of the month where you can write a reasonable goal or task for that week. I've made five columns and I consider a week for each month something that has more than three weekdays in it, which is not an exact science, but I believe it works. I like to write the days in each week and block off an extra week if there is one. The space may seem limited, but I think we tend to overplan, not realizing how much is realistically possible to get done in a single week. Once I have a rough task list on the quarterly page, I bring this over to my monthly calendar and utilize the space for notes. 
I also use the space on the left to add more trackers from the widgets that come with this palette. I like to highlight the current week I'm planning for so that it's quick to navigate to that week. I always need a visual cue to remind me where I am and seeing it move from week to week makes me aware of time passing. The week layout is standard with priorities, tasks, trackers and a list for what's upcoming with a bit more space for trackers or notes. Each day is split into four blocks for flexible planning. The Bougeau Queen, Amanda H. Lee, taught me to keep my events separate from my tasks, so I usually place these on top. Sometimes I add any house chores or trackers for that specific day in that space too. With the remaining blocks, I sometimes separate work, personal projects, and life admin, or I split tasks according to their order of importance, and sometimes, more simply, what I'll be doing in the morning, afternoon, and evening. There are stickers that come with the planner designed specifically to fit on the weekly spread if you'd like to cover up certain areas you won't need, which makes this planner really flexible for your planning style. When I have a specific day coming up that's really busy, I'll insert a page from the templates available. There are also more weekly layout options when you're feeling for a bit of a change or you need more space for notes. To use the template, I copy page from the three dot menu, navigate back to the month from the week that I need it for, and from the plus icon, paste page. I'll quickly add markers to the page to make it more relevant for that month. Each month has three more features I'd like to show you. At the beginning of the month, there's a blank page for planning, decorating, and vision boarding, or whatever you need it to be for that month. You can also use this space to place other tracking widgets or create your own trackers. Speaking of trackers, there's a few included as part of the planner at the beginning and end of the month. First, there's those linked with the heart icon. This is a space to be filled out throughout the month. Here you'll find the somewhat obligatory health tracker because we need to log symptoms and pick up patterns if we want to recognize any recurring health issues. Then there's the input output tracker. I started this when I realized I was consuming more than I was creating. I was learning things, but I couldn't see where I was applying it. As Elizabeth Gilbert says in her book, Big Magic, we all need an activity to do outside of the mundane to keep us sane. Created things don't have to be shared, but there's certainly something indescribable about the effect of creating something that wouldn't have existed if you didn't show up. The insights and learnings are for any profound realizations you got from a book, watching a video, or from personal reflections. Having a singular place in your planner helps you remember them and it can pick you up when you're feeling low. At the end of the month is a review page linked with the pencil icon. Before jumping into a new month, there's a few basic questions that can give you a renewed perspective. I love this process of checking out because it helps me hit reset on what otherwise feels like time and priorities slipping away. This monthly reflection is so important if we're serious about seeing meaningful change in our lives. In addition to these, there's some trackers and overview pages to be filled out and reviewed every once in a while. There's a progress tracker to keep you accountable and motivated. A procrastination tracker with guided questions for when you're feeling stuck and need help identifying your blocks. A financial tracker for an overall view of how you're spending your money. A well-being page to list affirmations, steps for self-care and a wish list. And finally, an ideal week spread to plan out blocks of time and refer back to when you're feeling a little lost. The other section to navigate to on every page is the sticker book. This is where I want to keep all my widgets that I'll be using often. These are the stickers that come with this planner. And if you're using GoodNotes, you'll get a dedicated sticker book. I've added the hex code for the colors used in this planner if you want to customize your pens and highlighters. The last few things I've added to the planner are a meal ideas page, because what's for supper is always the question, and a little bookshelf. These pages are blank because everyone has their unique way of organizing. If you don't need them, you can simply make a box over the title and rename it to keep your hyperlink intact. I hope you enjoyed going through this planner with me. I'll be creating a plan with me for February so we can get more in depth about planning and designing spreads. This planner is currently available and is linked below. Happy planning, a little goal getter.